All right, uh, in this video we're going to learn how to use our calculator to find the absolute minimum and maximum of this polynomial here uh, on the interval negative 3 to 5. Okay, so uh, a lot of students get confused by what this means. Oops. What this means on the interval negative 3 to 5. Uh, all that means is that <clears throat> You know, if, if I didn't put that there, then we'd be asking, you know, what's the absolute minimum and maximum of this function for, for all values in the domain? So from negative infinity to infinity, which is the, the domain of this function. But when we're restricting ourselves to the interval negative 3 to 5, that just means our, uh, we're looking at like a snapshot of this function from when x is negative 3 to when x is 5. Okay, so uh, the first thing we need to do is put this in our calculator. So I've got mine up. And I recommend that you have yours out as well um, to follow along because this is a skill you're going to need all year for sure. Uh, so I'm going to punch in x cubed minus 6x squared minus 8x plus 10. Okay, and now, uh, so there's my function. Now the, the nice thing is because we are looking at uh, we're looking at this function on the interval negative 3 to 5 that basically tells us what our x min and x max is going to be so that negative 3 there is our x min in our calculator and that 5 there is going to be our x max In our calculator. So that's nice. That's that work's done for us. So my x min I'm gonna put is negative three. My x max is a five. <clears throat> okay, now my y min and y max are negative ten to ten. Now if you just hit the graph button, uh, you'll see that much of the graph goes off the screen above and below. What that means is we have to adjust our window for, for y our y min, y min and y max. Now that that can often be a sort of a um, guess and check process, but one little tip I should um, uh, let you know about is if you just go to hit second and then graph, go to the table, you know, go over to negative three, you see that the y value is negative 47, and if you go up to five, you see that the y value is negative 55. So that gives you an idea of what you should make your your y min and y max. So I'm going to make mine like uh, negative 60 and uh, negative 60 to positive 60 because I think that's going to that's going to accommodate uh, the maxes and mins, which is what we're, we're after. Yeah, so that works. So we have our whole picture here. Um, now, here's how you want to organize this. We got to find the absolute min and absolute max. Now, it's not always the case that the absolute, absolute min and absolute maxes are just the peaks uh, and valleys of the, of the graph, especially when you're on, uh, talking about a function on an interval. So what I mean by that is it's, it's completely possible in this problem for the absolute min or max to be at one of the endpoints. All right. Now, to keep us uh, organized, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and <clears throat> make a, a sketch of this graph. It doesn't have to be beautiful. Just needs to get the job done. All right, so I'm gonna make you know negative three go here, and, uh, five here, and if we look at our picture, it's sort of doing something like this. Okay, something like that. All right, so, uh, and what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna make a table to kind of keep track of the key, the key points. So there's, oops, there's, ah, let's do that. There we go, x and f. All right, so my two endpoints are negative 3 and 5, so we're going to start by putting them right there, negative 3 and 5. 
Okay, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate what the, va <coughs> what the value is at negative 3 and, and uh, at 5. And the way you do that is you just go to second trace. And number 1 says value, so you can press 1 or enter at this moment. X equals, press negative 3. You get negative 47. And so we'll record that. Right, and then if you go back to our smart view, uh, again go to second calc and hit value, and plus 5, and we see that negative 55 is the y value and x is 5. Okay, and I like to put them on the, t on the graph as well, so I would label this point 5, negative 55. And we'll label this point negative 3, negative 47. Alright, so now what we have to do is um, we got to calculate these, these, this sort of high peak here and this uh, low value that sort of occurs right before the endpoint. So to do that, you're going to hit second trace, or the calc button. Whenever you hit second, it hits the, the, the blue function, which are uh, above all these other buttons. And you're going to go down to max, maximum. And I'm going to calculate that max first. Now what happens is you get a cursor on the screen, and this cursor uh, will move along the curve as you hit the left button. And what you want to do is you want to go a little bit to the left of this peak. Press enter. See how it said left bound? Now it says right bound, so you're going to go a little bit to the right of the peak. Press enter again, and then it says guess, and you're just going to press enter again. And there we have it. We get uh, our x value for our, uh, this, this maximum point is negative, uh, negative 0.58, and I'm going to round to the thousandths. Negative 0.582. And it looks like the y value was 12.427. All right, so there's that value. And now we just got to calculate this, this minimum right here. Now, see how the words are a little bit in the way? If that, if that ever happens, just go to your window and make your y value go down a little bit more. So like your y min is a negative 60, let's make it like negative 80 or something. Okay, that's going to help a little bit. <clears throat> Good, so now we can calculate that minimum. So hit second calc and go to minimum. Okay, go a little bit to the right, uh, left, where it says left bound, go a little bit to the right. Enter, enter. And then we see that our minimum is 4.582, So we note that. Four point five eight two. All right, so uh, I'm just going to jot those down here. All right, and so now we just need to answer the question. Uh, the absolute minimum 
The absolute minimum, well, if you, see, if you look closely on the table, it looks like it's a contest between uh, this point here, uh, this local minimum here, and this local minimum here. Now the one that's lowest, clearly, is this one here, just barely, but that's the lowest one. So I'm going to write, we have our absolute min of negative uh, 56.427, and that occurs at x equals 4. 0.582, and then I've got an absolute max. Doesn't doesn't look like it's a surprise here. It's that point there clearly. Our absolute max of 12.427, and that occurs at x equals uh, negative 0.582. Okay, so we're done. Now, just to keep in mind, we did need to check these endpoints because it is completely possible that the, the absolute min and max could have occurred, uh, could have occurred on uh, at one of those endpoints. Before we go, let's just uh, do a slope number line and, and answer the question of increasing decreasing. We might as well because uh, that's a very important part of this chapter as well. So um, <clears throat> here's my slope number line and. What's different about this is when you compare it to the one I did in the last video is we actually have endpoints because this is going this is a, a graph on the interval of negative three to five. So I'm gonna put endpoints there and put a negative three and a five. And as usual, we have to put uh, the the critical points on this on this number line. So the first critical point is gonna be this x value here. Okay, that's negative 0.582, and the other critical point is going to be 4.582. Okay, now again, a slope number line tracks the slope. Okay, it tracks when the graph is rising and falling, and if you trace this graph from left to right, it's clearly rising it's rising in that interval, and then it's falling on that interval, and then it's rising again. So we can we can very easily answer the question of when it's increasing, when this function is increasing and decreasing. It's increasing, and here's where you got to be careful, right? We're so used to infinities, but we're only looking at a snapshot of this, this function. It's increasing from negative 3 to negative uh, 0.582. And then it's increasing from 4.582 until 5. And it's decreasing from negative point five eight two until four point five eight two. Okay, so there you have it. That's a that's a, you know, it took longer than you'll do. I mean, it took longer to explain than you'll do. But there's a, there's a lot in this this one little lesson. Um, you should be able to find maxes and mins, uh, endpoints, and um, create slope number lines appropriately um, after this lesson. <clears throat>